classical liberals have been wrong-footed, I think, by the need for something more fulfilling, which is why classical liberalism always relied on an unspoken assumption that you were going to find meaning in your family, you were going to find meaning in religious community, you were going to find meaning in bettering your social life outside of government. But when that unspoken understanding just dissipated, when, when religion started to, to fall apart, all that was left was, well, let's just be rational with one another. There's not much inspiring there. And I think that's why you see that across the board, a drive toward irrationalism, a certain level of romanticism dominating the society to the point where irrationalism is much more prized than rationalism. If you make a, a rational point, if you cite data, very often this is now considered not only impossible. Yeah, uh, everything that Ben says is rational and therefore he's an advocate for rationalism, except, you know, uh, let's avoid the endless amount of readily available uh, empirical research on any particular matter. In the world of Ben Shabibo, rational uh, ideas literally launch themselves off of common sense, okay? He often, as a reactionary, will say, well, it's common sense, it's just common sense. And then will work towards that bias that you probably hold on to, okay, by uh, cherry picking data points to uh, post hoc rationalize his point of view. That's basically Ben Shapiro's entire grift, okay? He'll just, he will say, well, it's just common sense. You know, there are two genders, it's just common sense. And then avoid the mountain of scientific evidence available that disproves what he's saying about even gender being binary, even from a biological standpoint, okay? And we'll just talk about the common sense aspect, or we'll find like one singular fucking scientist that's, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a anti uh, scientific consensus in the matter, and we'll hyper focus on that, okay? It's ridiculous. Like, you're, uh, you, you promote vaccine hesitancy, you're anti fucking climate change science, like, you're, you're anti science in every meaningful capacity, but then you talk about fucking empirical evidence and, and facts and, and logic when you are literally advocating for the anti science party and anti education Politic, party. But, but damaging and dangerous. The other thing that, that ideology does and the, the radical left. Is oh, damn, dude. My man got fucking ass whooped by Slavo Zizek so hard that is he coming out against the uh, ideology now? Sir, also very good at this is that it provides you with a locale, a convenient locale for the for the uh, existence of evil. And so, if you reflexively identify the patriarchy with evil, well, first of all, that's a powerful idea. It's Bro, this guy just literally his entire gripe with the world is just like fucking meninist shit, okay? I am realizing, I am realizing that like all he wants, all he fucking wants, dude, is just for, for, for men's rights, okay? He will probably shut the fuck up if uh, he could just freely say like, women should be able to get back into the kitchen. Like, without any sort of scrutiny, he would just, like, he would just go away quietly. Like, you know how every issue with Ben Shabibo, every issue with Ben Shabibo turns into transphobia? Like, he will find a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon way to, like, tie everything back to transphobia or uh, doing transphobia. For Jordan Peterson, like, every conversation goes back to, like, well, you know, traditional masculinity is not wrong and it's not bad. The dragon of chaos wants to take it down. It's like, how, dude? Like, what? You're talking about wealth inequality and personal responsibility, and you literally were, it, were it was, you were able to turn that into a conversation about how the modern man is has been robbed of his fucking machismo. Like, it's nuts. It's fucking insane. Not everything has to be about fucking masculinity, especially. When Jordan Peterson is literally devoid of the same application of, of the masculine features that he himself espouses, okay? You sound like a pussy, you cry all the fucking time, all right? And you couldn't take care of your fucking family. So, like, I don't believe in the ideal of, of masculinity that you subscribe to, but you yourself are not even promoting it, okay? It's so weird that... Kermit voice Andy that sounds like a goddamn sock puppet 
who fucking cries about the, the fall of Western civilization all the goddamn time is then simultaneously advocating for this macho masculine man. And you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to be macho again. Like, why don't you fucking be macho first? And no, masculinity or being macho doesn't come from just eating pounds and pounds of red meat and getting owned into oblivion by fucking apple cider. Okay? You're a pussy with a weak-ass immune system then. Dumbass. It, independent of its broad merit. It's, a, it's true. Now, it's not the only truth, and it's not the complete truth, but it's true. The reason it's true is because every hierarchical system, hierarchical system degenerates, tends to degenerate in the direction of power. And all hierarchical systems are less than they could be. And that's partly because of the possibility that power and deceit will corrupt them, but also partly because we're willfully blind and deceitful in our own personal lives. And so when you tell young people that the cause of the trouble they see around them in the world, and maybe even the disquiet in their own heart, is the malevolent inadequacy of their society, that rings true. And they don't hear the rest of the story, you know, and it's the rest of the story that I've been trying to tell. They don't hear the story that why does he sound like an anarchist when he's talking about power and how ultimately all hierarchies are built upon a, a power structure that is inherently uh, corrupt? Like he literally, did he, did he just get like slapped in the face after he like got owned by Zizek? He started like reading Chomsky or something. Uh, it, it just, it's so weird uh, to, to hear him uh, advocate for these sorts of things. But I don't even know where he's going with that argument. Like, I, but that's good. <laughs> All hierarchies inherently are built upon a power dynamic that is uh, prone or predisposed to corruption. But that's good, actually. Especially if I'm the one holding the power. Because I'm going to be the magnanimous, benevolent dictator, unlike all the other guys. Sorry, I'm built differently. Just let me be sexist. Fuck. And they don't hear the rest of the story, you know, and it's the rest of the story that I've been trying to tell. They don't hear the story that, yeah, don't forget about the evil and corruption that exists in your own heart. And don't forget about the fact that nature, this wondrous goddess as portrayed by the anti -hue. Okay, I'm sorry, dude, you're a pussy, okay? You sound like a... <laughs> God, I, I don't want to say anything. Now I'm going to offend people, but like, again... I don't believe this personally, but if I were a reactionary Republican, I would hear this guy and be like, what are you talking about? Fucking nature? Like uh, being a beautiful, wonderful goddess? Like what, what kind of pussy shit is this, dude? What, what, what the fuck? Human environmentalists. And I, by that, I don't mean all environmentalists, by the way. That wonderful goddess nature is also trying to make you ill and kill you at all times. And so, but the story that corruption exists in hierarchical structure and that that's a consequence of malevolence, the malevolent use of power and deceit, that's true. So it's very motivating, especially if you're young and you're looking for an adventure. Now it's also too convenient, which is one of its tri tremendous dangers because unless you're taught to look within and identify the malevolence there as the primary moral obligation, then you now have an excuse and a moral justification to take out all of your negative emotion, your hostility, your resentment, everything about you that's unexamined on the demonic enemy. And of course, that's, that, that, that degenerates with extraordinary rapidity. The funny thing about Jordan Peterson is that like every criticism that he like very, very casually and in a very cyclical way is describing because of his uh, 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 way of speaking could absolutely be launched in the inverse against those who follow the Jordan Peterson school of thought and believe in like the traditional masculine male and the power structures inherent in nature and therefore is justifiable uh, and, and good. Okay. Like, what he's talking about 
if you have a leftist point of view, you hear what he's saying and you're like, yeah, he's right. And that's, that's why it's so weird how vicious, uh, reactionaries are, uh, towards those, uh, that they have declared are the enemy, which would be Jordan Peterson in this sense, in this, uh, argument. So it's kind of odd to hear him constantly make these like cyclical arguments that don't really go anywhere where you can't really fucking, uh, he won't like fully subscribe to who the enemy is because of how vague, uh, it is, right? How much time have you spent with women sexually? Oh God. I love that. I, I love, I love that. I love that. I love when fucking people say shit like that, dude. They're so strange, dude. So fucking weird. How much time have you spent with woman sexuality? Have we, as we've seen over and over and over. So it's up to the, it's up to the centrists on both sides to, to deal with this. I've been talking to a lot of the, the centrists on both sides to deal with. Optimist rationalist types on my podcast, Matt Ridley and Bjorn Lomberg and well, and Height and, and Pinker more, more distantly, but more recently, uh, Lomberg and, and Ridley and, and uh, Marion Tupi, who, who's written a lovely book on uh, human progress, uh, 10 Things Everyone Needs to Know About Human Progress. It's something like that, huh? Anyways. That's the mega, that's the mega centrism, dude. The centrist on both sides is incredible. Dude, it's so funny. You'll be like, Hey, hey, Jordan Peterson, hypothetically, what kind of coffee would you like? And then he'll just be like, well, you know, uh, Persephone and uh, Hylas and the Nymphs uh, had an approach to coffee. Okay. When, when Sisyphus, when, when Heracles was moving from time and space through the dragon of chaos, when he was fighting the women and all the stories uh, that we have talked about. There was, a, there was conflict inherent in the argument, and that's why Greek mythos is deeply embedded with the same kind of... with the same kind of cultural underpinnings that you can see both in the Bible and all the way to the objective truth that we believe in now, deep within ourselves. Another argument you can talk about is the natural hierarchies of lobsters very similar to human beings and uh and you know that's everything i'm mentioning here is is coming to the conclusion but i won't get to it eventually and it's like you're sitting there you're like uh the fuck i just want to know do you want decaf or do you want caffeinated coffee motherfucker just literally answer the question about coffee why are you talking about women and and, and and how the, the inherent natural hierarchy between women and men have somehow been bastardized in modernity. I just want to know if you want fucking caffeine or if you don't want caffeine in like decaffeinated or caffeinated coffee. One of the things we discussed consistently was the difficulty in promoting the message that all three of these men are very aware of, which is that from a material perspective, in terms of absolute privation worldwide, humanity is way better off on virtually every dimension you could possibly measure than ever. And, and most of that improvement has occurred in the last 40 years, and it's been revolutionary in its speed. And no one knows this. And so... Yeah, literally no one thinks about uh, all of the, uh, the achievements of humanity. But of course, not all achievements are created equal. For example, the birth control pill which allowed women to have autonomy over their bodies and start entering the workplace and wearing lipstick, which makes me want to fuck them. I have uncontrollable urges. It's very important to note, to try to think through why that is. Like, that's such a positive message. Now, I talked to Russell Brandt about this. I don't know why he makes it seem like it's not reactionary conservatives, but instead like progressive liberals that actually uh, uh, hate uh, the advancement of technology. It's a, it's a really weird, it's a really weird take. 
Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, a normal take that is expected on this broadcast, at the very least, is that at the top of the hour, there's a 60-second ad break. A commercialized entity enforced by private contracts. Amazon. Jeff Bezos. A wonderful overlord that is all good and all loving and all knowing, which we should uh, subject our servile beings to. Because we do not know how to control ourselves. Well, that man wants me to serve an ad to you. But I'm here to tell you that if you'd like to no longer see said ads when you watch the broadcast, well, then all you need to do is subscribe. If you subscribe with an Amazon Prime, or with a Twitch Prime, rather, you will defeat the dragon of chaos. Here's the ad break now. I have to pee. And I'm bringing him up for a reason. He's, he's a lefty by temperament and by heart. And his first objection, but he's very thoughtful and quick, his first objection, you know, I pointed out all this data showing that by every possible objective measure, everything is way better than it was certainly 100 years ago, but certainly even 20 years ago, um, even on the environmental front in the main. And he said, well, what about disparity of distribution. So there's the problem of absolute level of wealth, let's say. That's improving. But there is still tremendous disparity. And of course, that that is fair enough. You could even point out that the role of the left is to provide a conscientious voice for, for that's constantly attending to the fact of continuing disparity regardless of absolute level of wealth. And, and fair enough. But, but having said all that, it's a great mystery that incremental optimism is not sufficiently motivating. And you can't just wish human nature is going to change. It's not going to change. We got to tell a better story. And I also think that's why I'm a target, I think, is because I am actually trying to tell a better story and I'm actually having some success with it. So I totally agree with that. And, and that really does bring us to the book because one of the things that folks should know about all of your books is that they are very intimate, very personal. You talk about yourself, but you also speak in, in a way that most writers do not. You use second person. Yeah, uh, it's, it, he, he does talk in a way that most people do not. Because if most people talk that way, you would go literally insane. If people consistently just went on these never-ending tangents that somehow always revolve around fucking uh, the... the uh, the the lack of uh, traditional approach to like uh, gendered patriarchy or how patriarchy is fucking good, uh, then I would lose my mind. If that imagine if Jordan Peterson is your family member, you go to the drive thru and you're like, "Do you want chicken McNuggets? Like, what what do you want?" And the conversation inevitably revolves around how like the female chickens are supposed to be slaughtered, but now uh, the natural hierarchy has been disrupted. It's like, dude, it's, this is, we are literally at a Wendy's, dude. What the fuck? Just tell me if you want the spicy chicken nuggies or not. I am going to get out of this car and scream. Pronouns. I mean, you speak directly to the reader. You say, you feel this way. You think this way. And a lot of people read that and say, I do think that way. This is a person who's speaking directly to me in a way that, you know, mainstream political books very often do not. They consider me sort of a widget in whatever ideology they're pushing or or they, they're considering the, the value of systems or not systems. But you sort of end around that. And I think that in many ways, that's what men, members of the left find so, so threatening is because if you're a member of the left and you believe that all individuals are essentially just the outgrowths of institutions and therefore that all change by individuals is going to be insufficient and that it must be societal change that, that creates individual change, you're a threat because you're telling people, well, you know, the system's can certainly get better, but the... What? Wait, why would that be threatening? Literally zero people that are like actual fucking leftists would be like, um, I hate that you are making a structural analysis. I hate that you are advocating for a structural change rather than uh, believing in the baby-brained idea that like individuals are good or bad. Wow, it's a real threat when people advocate for systemic change, like systemic racism. Now, the difference is, the difference is, like, Jordan Peterson will literally say there is no, like, uh, there is no gendered patriarchy, or if there is one, it's good. Okay? 
there is no like patriarchal heteronormative existence but if there was one that would be good that's all he's fucking saying when you can actually you know push him into a fucking certain point of view because he will never give you anything because he's slippery as fuck as opposed to Ben Shabibo who's literally like systemic racism does not exist so why is he I think he said the opposite wait he's saying people on the left find you threatening because so threatening is because books very often do not they consider me sort of a widget and whatever ideology they're pushing or or they, they're considering the, the value of systems or not systems, but you sort of end around that. And I think that in many ways, that's what men, members of the left find so, so threatening is because if you're a member of the left and you believe that all individuals are essentially just the outgrowths of institutions. Oh, 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 he's saying the left believes this. Okay, that's true. And therefore that all change by individuals is going to be insufficient. And then- Okay, but that part is fucking ridiculous. Not a single person is like, like people, I, I get annoyed when people are constantly like, no, only advocate for systemic change and don't focus on the fucking individuals. Like you're 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 ref you're referencing like eleven people, okay? And it must be that's not like a real fucking thing. Societal change. Those people also have the capacity to be delusional as well. For the record, like you know, you can be a leftist and be still be delusional or stupid. For the record, it's like that's not a. There is no such thing where it's like I subscribe to one ideology and that means I am ultimately the smartest person in every fucking room. And anyone who tries to tell you that is an idiot, okay? There are plenty of morons on the left. There are plenty there are a lot more morons on the right, but there are plenty of fucking idiots on the left too. Change that, that creates individual change. You're a threat because you're telling people, well, you know, the systems can certainly get better, but the main threat to you is you, and that is a deeply threatening message to people. And if people find fulfillment in that message, then the left really does have a problem because if people start improving their lives within the system and not blaming the system for their problems, and instead, recognizing that that they can improve their lives. That's what mem members of the left hate most of all. You know, you talk about in the book, Jordan. Yeah, people on the left fucking hate self-improvement, dude. My God, I just like, I fucking literally, I hate it so much, dude. I get so mad when I think about people making their lives better. My God. Nothing triggers me more than this, boys. Nothing. And I mean nothing. Self-improvement. Oh, I'm so mad. It, it's a wonderful argument because <clears throat> ultimately it is reduced to the age-old recycled content, which is leftists are dirtbags and fucking hippies and unwashed. And if you get a haircut and you get a job, then you won't, uh, you won't be a hippie anymore. Like, that's basically what Ben Shapiro is saying. And that's why... That's why leftists hate uh, self-improvement because like if they were, if they would improve themselves then ultimately they'd be conservative. Uh, you're a fucking idiot, okay? The fact that people are constantly coming up to you and they're saying things like, you know, I, I was leading a, a dissolute life. I read your book. I started taking your advice and I've turned it around and now I'm doing much better in life. And, you know, I'm blessed to have much the same experience from a lot of people who listen to the show, people who have been homeless, who now have graduated Harvard Law School, people who were single moms and, and then, and then decided to to take a college course and and figure out their lives. People who have made mistakes and turned their mistakes around. And to me, those are inspirational stories. I think that because those inspirational stories exist, that I think is why people find you to be such a threat. It's because so many people are inspired by the stuff that you say and change their life individually without putting all of their ire and focus on a system that the left is mainly focused on tearing down. I defy anyone to go read ten thousand comments on my YouTube channels and not come away. Dude, why the fuck would anyone do that, dude? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Uh, with a much better, with a much refreshed view of human nature. The comments are, in the main, unbelievably positive. And not in a naive sense. They're positive in a thoughtful sense. And, the, and in a communal sense, because the people who are making comments on the lectures are also commenting on each other. And there is ideological babble on both sides. I would say that's probably 5% of the comments. And uh, generally, I believe they're written by people who didn't actually watch the lecture because they're often out of context. But in any case, 95% of the comments are thoughtful, 
but also extremely positive, which is very rare in a social media comment. Imagine trying to trash someone whose words help out thousands yearly. Bro, why doesn't he fucking help himself, dude? That's just, that's all I want. Yo, help yourself out and then help out some bitches, dude. Seriously, Jordan Peterson. Okay. How about you self-help yourself? Okay. Comment landscape, which tends to be very, very toxic. Yo, I can't believe this guy would have the audacity to come into my chat of all chats and criticize me, a person who helps out thousands of individuals every single day, dude. It's crazy. And so I think that's absolutely great. And it certainly has that impact on me when I when I read it. Um, but then here's something else that I, I've observed in the media attacks that have been directed towards me. They're not. It's wonderful, dude. There is never like, there is not a single mention of wealth inequality here, dude. This fucking, this entire video sucks. And I can't even fault Ben Shabibo for this. For trying to like at least clickbait. Because you can't pin him down on a singular position. Like I literally thought there was going to be some like brilliant analysis on how, you know, personal responsibility is not happening enough in society. And that's why there's wealth inequality. And I can't believe people are blaming systems when it's just work harder forehead. But like we've watched nine minutes of this and I haven't even heard the fucking classic conservative takes. There's just nothing. Not just directed towards me. They're, well, first they're directed to who they think I am. So that's kind of interesting to begin with. But more than directed to me and more perniciously is that they're- Wait, did they, did they talk about it while I was peeing in the bathroom? Maybe? Directed to those who are hypothetically following me. Now, I don't regard myself as someone with followers. I regard myself as someone with viewers, listeners, and readers. And that's different, but in any case, my typical follower, so goes the story, is a disaffected, angry, young, white male. And for a while, I, in some sense, pushed back against that and said, well, my audience is about 70% male, but YouTube skews male, so that's perhaps part of the reason. And I see no evidence that it's particularly limited racially or ethnically, especially when I watch, see my lecture crowds and when I meet people on the street. But, but then I started to realize that that was the wrong response. The right response is, why does it disturb you so much that there's a group of people who by your own admission are disaffected and angry and alienated and young, and I'm helping them. And why is that exactly a problem? Because you're not helping them, dumbass. That's the point. Like, helping them with regular self-help shit, yeah, that's one thing, okay? But it's like saying Tony Robbins helps millions of people a year, okay? Like, it's a grift, ultimately. It's like saying an evangelical pastor helps uh, their community. It's how much you put in the tithe that is a problem, and what you get out of it that is a, still ultimately a problem. There's some truth to it. Maybe the evangelical pastor's fucking uh, take uh, and preaching of the endless preaching of the prosperity gospel maybe gives people the motivation to go out and work. But ultimately, all he's doing is fucking... Uh, all he's doing is filling up his own coffers, paying for another private jet uh, at the cost of... Was it Tony Robinson? I always forget the fucking name of uh, the... the self-help guru guy uh but regardless like i mean he's technically helping them he's giving if you ask those tony robbins not robinson sorry um uh, if you ask those people they feel like they've been they're being helped but it's like if you're guiding your flock uh the direction that you're guiding them to is also important okay if you recognize the responsibility that you might have, as you alluded to, uh, having followers, despite the fact that you give a disclaimer, but you obviously understand you have followers, then where you are leading them towards is also important. And with Jordan Peterson, um, he is like the the incredible like gateway drug to conservative politics because he just uh, 
he'll he'll tell you that like no systemic problems are an issue it's not your fault that you can't get pussy okay it's the systemic uh change that occurred already and we need to implement systemic change in the form of like reverting back to the norm the traditional heteronormative uh, patriarchy so that you can get pussy again He's not political. That's not what he says. He's not political. LMAO says Walter many balls. How many months is this motherfucker? Three months subscriber. You're just mad that this guy found a thing he can do that works. He's telling people what they need to hear. What's it to you? Literally, why do you hate on him? What? He never says that? Dude. There's always uh, some uh, idiot in the chat. I Actually, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't call you an idiot. Look, a lot of people are, a, a lot of people uh, get blinded by this kind of rhetoric. Okay. But if you think that Jordan Peterson is not political, you're out of your mind, dude. This guy literally went on Turning Point USA, bro, uh, Turning Point USA seminars, participated alongside like the Trump administration, Charlie Kirk, Ben Shabibo. He's literally on Ben Shapiro's broadcast right now. Like, he is absolutely political. He is a conservative. He's a reactionary conservative that masks his reactionary conservatism by making it seem like he is an apolitical self-help guru uh, and um, like that that straight up uh, brings everything back to how uh, the left is fucking bad. And there's some bad, there's bad on the, on the reaction or on the Republican side. The conservatives are bad too, but let's always hyper-focus on the left. It's like saying, I'm not political, dude, because I play video games. I'm not, Hassan isn't political, guys. Uh, he's only famous for his 9-11 take. Just like Jordan Peterson is literally famous for his bastardized interpretation of a law, a, 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 a pro-trans speech law that was implemented at the federal level in, in Canada, C-16, that was so, so fucking misconstrued and so bastardized that like, C-16, yes, that the Canadian Bar Association literally had to, to correct the record that this was not, uh, this was uh, being weaponized against trans people and that it is completely wrong. What is it that I'm supposed to be doing with them? Just out of curiosity. What do you think? If you had your druthers, would I ignore them? Would no one talk to them? Is that actually what you want? Well, the answer seems quite clear that that is exactly what's wanted. That's what's held forth because there's this implicit assumption in all of this critique that in my very act of aid, I'm doing something immoral. Immoral enough to be parodied, let's say, as Red's copium. I'm aiding them. I'm aiding and abetting. Yeah, dude. Dude, like literally every fucking cult, uh, every cult uh, leader has said exactly the same things that Jordan Peterson has, has said. Now, Jordan Peterson's uh, rhetoric is not as harmful as cult leaders. I'm sorry. I, I, he's not like directly leading you to fucking uh, uh, drink the Kool-Aid and die like other cult leaders do. But uh, the cult that he's leading you towards is the cult of Christian traditionalism and... Uh, and just a traditionalist worldview, a conservative worldview. Uh, he just like slowly feeds you that by um, by putting forward like uh, you know just common sense opinions. Let's go. Oh, the all meat diet thing is probably not good for your fucking health, though. I'm sure plenty of people that uh, watched uh, the the uh, all meat diet stuff uh, definitely got sucked into it. Are your beliefs not a cult? Bitch, half the time you can't even pin me down to a specific ideology within the left, and that is deliberate and on purpose. The fuck do you mean is your cult, is your belief system not an ideology? Literally everyone gets mad because I criticize every aspect of the left. So just what the hell's going on here? It's like, why is that 
now uh, fodder for for parody. Because in that sense, I am like Jordan Peterson after or all. Or slander, precisely. I mean, do you debate the fact that I'm helping? Well, you go read the comments yourself and see what you think. And so then, and then I thought about that a bunch too. I thought, well, what is it with, with men, the men that I'm speaking to, let's say, um, why are they responding positively? Why do they come to my lectures, the biblical lectures even, which is very surprising, right? Because what the hell are men doing at a biblical lecture, especially young men, especially when they could go do anything else and they have to pay for it. It's like, what are they doing coming to this lecture? Well, if the patriarchy is an evil ty tyranny, then the appropriate attitude towards any male ambition is to not treat it as ambition, but to treat it as nascent drive to tyrannical power, which is certainly what uh, Foucault would recommend, for example, or Derrida, because it's all power. And so if you see some young man trying to stand up and better himself in any dimension, you're not going to trust that. You're going to identify that as the manifestation of tyrannical power. And clearly, if the patriarchy is a malevolent tyrant, then any sign of the desire to contribute to it should be, at minimum, not encouraged. But more subtly, criticized and discouraged at every possible opportunity. And that's our culture. If you enjoyed This is so bad. I thought the voice of Jordan Peterson was Kermit the Frog, but it actually just sounds like Kermit. Yeah. Okay. Hot take. Jordan Peterson rarely tells you how to improve yourself, but instead how to fit into pre-structured roles of power that society is able for white males. Of course, taking that role of power feels like a personal improvement from a subjective point of view. But no, nah, he does tell you how to improve yourself. I mean, he, that's why uh, some of the self-help shit that I tell you, which is pretty solid advice, like cleaning your room or uh, creating small goals for yourself that uh, focus on achieving larger goals in the long term. This is a thing that I do in my life that has been very helpful. Uh, and, and I believe it's very helpful for, it could be very helpful for others as well. That stuff is actually just basic self-help shit. And it's good. It's successful. It's smart. It gives you a little dopamine rush. Like you, you, get, uh, you get your hormones uh, uh, kicking in. Okay. Uh, when you, when you achieve those little goals and it helps you, you know, go through your day a little bit easier. Um, that, that is just like basic self-help shit. It's not profound. I don't think any of that is profound to be honest. It's not a secret. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, it's barely self-help is common sense. I mean, yeah, but still, uh, I guess the problem I have is not with Jordan Peterson saying like better yourself. It's when he says, don't cast stones before you, uh, you know, fix your own house. And, and, uh, and you're never going to fix your own house because a lot of the issues that we speak of do not revolve around like individuals solving the problems for themselves. Like, you're not going to eliminate racism. You're not going to eliminate racism, which is a systemic issue, by fucking yelling at a singular racist. You might make the immediate uh, uh, surrounding area more comfortable for those who are marginalized, and you have every right to self-defense in that regard. But like, that's not actually uh, that's not actually stopping other races from popping up. Okay, so whenever people hyper focus on the individual aspect of uh, whenever people hyper focus on the individual aspect of like uh, systemic problems, I get a little annoyed because uh, both liberals and conservatives do this where conservatives will say, uh, conservatives will say like, uh, uh, what is systemic racism? It's just a collection of individuals being racist and, uh, focus on the racists. Uh, show me where the racists are. Show me where the racists are. And liberals will do a similar thing where, where they want to engage in like, uh, the immediate gratification that comes from like, uh, dismantling, a, a racist structure in the form of like, uh, attacking someone, that they perceive as racist or being racist at the time. And it, it doesn't fucking, it doesn't work that way. Okay. 
it, it just does not work that way. Like, you didn't do shit by uh, yelling at someone who you perceive is racist on, on uh, Twitter. And there are instances where that person's infractions are not even uh, up to the standard uh, to, to yell at them. A lot of instances, actually.